In this video, we're going to be looking at slider or sliders. You may use more than one, but the component is called slider. And I'm going to look at the docs because it's always important to see what they have to say before just, you know, slapping in the code that you see me do. Because sometimes, believe it or not, in tutorials, they don't cover everything. And I certainly don't cover everything in every use case. But hey, we're going to look at the docs. And then after that, looks like I have about two or three examples to show for you all. So let's get into reading. So we see here that says the slider is used to allow users to make selections from a range of values. Well, there's a lot of other things we could do to pull that off. So what is so interesting about a slider? So as we scroll down here, we see that says sliders reflect a range of values along a bar from which users may select a single value. They are ideal for adjusting settings such as volume, brightness, or applying image filters. Now, an interesting thing here, since you're using React, I've seen a lot of wild and amazing things with React. I've seen video editors, PowerPoint type of programs with React. I've seen all sorts of stuff. And there are definitely a lot of use cases for maybe not always for your forms or your programs, but sliders are always a very, very nice, easy tool to give to your end user so they could you know, adjust their settings how they want to. I like using sliders. So we have four things coming in. We have a slider, a slider track, a slider filled track, and a slider thumb. So we have these four coming on in, as easy as this. So let's go down to a basic usage. So we have a slider. We have the RA label here, because you want to include those in your components. The default value of 30, 30 is right here. This thing goes up to 100. So we have the slider track, which is going to be this whole thing in here. We have the slider filled track, which is this blue part coming in here. And then we have outside of that, we have the slider thumb. And so this is the thumb as it's going left and right as we move it along here. And so we could change the slider color scheme. So we could come here at the top to the, the I can't even speak here, the most outer component, which is slider. We could drop the color scheme peak in here and we could see that even though this isn't like what I think of, maybe this pink, I don't know. Maybe it's just my eyes going out on me in old age here, but now it looks pink as we glide up and down this way. So we can also change the slider orientation here. And there's some interesting ways you would want to deal with this and work with this. We just have slider in kind of a um, vacuum here. Odds are you're going to have it in some kind of a layout component to, you know, resize and toggle and hold things as, you know, you change screen sizes or whatnot. So keep in mind that this example here is kind of good for it in a vacuum, but this may also depend upon, you know, what, how are your outer components laid? And so we could go up and down, up and down right here, just as we can from left to right. We could also customize the uh, slider here. And so we have the slider thumb. We have this box size is six. And then in here we have a box component, color tomato, as, and then this is one of the icons that you could bring in from the chakra library. I imagine you could use another external third party library if you wanted to, but this is good enough for the example here. We could also have discrete sliders. So this is, allows you to snap to predefined set of values. So we have a default value. It says here of 60, minimum zero, max 300, and we step at 30. So as you can see, it's uh, rather than sliding, it's skipping upward, which is uh, pretty useful because maybe you are doing something, maybe it's pepperonis on a pizza, right? And you don't, you don't want to have like three and then there's like seven and then you have someone calling in. It's like, I only get six pepperonis, right? Or maybe it's just easier to handle, you know, different sets of values depending on what it is you're uh, providing for the end user to set. I like pizza. I've worked at a lot of pizza places. So I think in terms of food mainly. And you could get the final value when the, um, the slider is done being drug or dragged. It says dragging the slider can trigger lots of updates and the user might only be interested in the final result after the sliding is complete. You can use the on change end for this. 
So on change end, we're passing in the value. It could be E, it could be, you know, pepperonis. It could be whatever you want this word to be here. And this is just logging out what the end value is. But you could think of this in a scenario where you're using like use state and you could be updating, updating the state this way and then informing the presentation, the visual layer, the website of what their final choice was or what they ended up landing on with the slider here. So this is a small example for that. And that all takes place inside of the slider. Coming down here, configure thumb focus with focus thumb on change. By default, slider thumb will receive focus whenever value changes. You can opt out of this behavior by setting the value of focus thumb on change to false. This is normally used with a controlled slider value here. So if you're interested in doing that, it's as easy as coming in here and using this prop and setting it to false. And then we have all sorts of other slider props in here for stuff for you to use, look at, experiment with. But I like to code, so let's go look at some of those examples I did. Alrighty, so you already see up here that I have these icons in here. I'm going to use the icons later on. So if you want to go ahead and pause and import these, feel free to. But we're going to take the slider. We're just going to make a very basic example of it. We have three examples in this end of the tutorial here. And this first one is just some color scheme, default value, and that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and make our base slider. So we can see right here that it's kind of jammed here at the top, but we have this slider right here at the top. We can see this button. If we click on it, it's got that blue little lighting around there. I know that's a little hard to see, but we set the default value at 30. So as we reset it here, we could go up to, I believe this is 100. And then down here to zero when we're done. And the color scheme is green. And this is kind of just the basic way to make a slider on here. And these are cool because you could use them, say you have some kind of online audio streaming device or something with a video or, or whatever it is you have, you could use this as a way to represent the beginning to completion of a something or decibels or whatever it is your heart desires. Now let's go into the next example. We're going to talk about things like orientation, um, and just how to customize these sliders a little bit more so you can make them a little bit more snazzy. All right, so let's go ahead and do something really interesting down here. So we have the slider track and then the uh, slider fill track here. But let's do something a little interesting with the slider thumb. Let's come and actually kind of customize what this little circular button looks like. And so now we see that we have this blue icon right here, which is just a little box in here. And this is a neat little trick you could do. So as we move this around, we can see that we have this bell. But what if we wanted to add the phone in here? Maybe you have some kind of, you know, uh, VoIP calling, so voice over IP. And this is really just for, like, the volume. You can move this left or right. And if you want to change this to red... You could do so, and now it's red. And I think that's a pretty cool thing you could do because you're not just stuck with the basics. Now you kind of could customize until your heart desires for something like this. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and do something with the orientation. So we see that it's going horizontally, but we could also get it to move vertically, so up and down. So let's go ahead and do this. We see this right here and it seems kind of stuck and that's a little strange. And so one way I found around that is to just add a, uh, a height or a min height. And so now we have this to work with. And so I don't know in what all cases you're going to use a 
you know, vertical orientation. But in cases that you do, this is how you would use it is just look at the orientation, set it to vertical. And then also if, if things get a little funny, you could just adjust the height of the slider overall and you could get it to appear, adjust it however you want to. Let's turn this back to horizontal. And what if we wanted to do something like, you know, uh, alert us when a value has been changed? How do we do that? How do we get the data coming out of here? And we could do it this way. So now what should happen is I just have an alert. So I'm going to get a, something that pops up right here. That's going to tell me what the value of the slider is after I change it. So let's go ahead and do this. Is it 38, 40, 41? So maybe that's not the best example here, but as you can see, as I move it, even, you know, this is not <laughs> alerting, obviously is covering it up right here and I have to click, you know, uh, okay or cancel there. But this is one way of just getting the information out of here. You're going to get it just by sending the value on out. And if we wanted to, we could do a, you know, console log. So let's just try this because that may be maybe a little bit nicer, a little bit easier to work with. So we see the console right here. Let's move this on out. Let's stretch this out. And we should start seeing stuff populate down here. And you can see that we clearly do. And it goes up to 100 and comes down to zero. So in the next example, what we're going to do is take this, slim it down a little bit, and just show you how to make a discrete slider. And then after that, y'all could go and do whatever you want to. All right, welcome back. So what we have here is our slider still. Let's reset it so it's at the value, uh, the value 30. But what if I wanted to change some aspects of it? What if I don't want it to go from 0 to 100? What if I want to go beyond 100? How do I do that? And how do I, you know, um, want only certain values to be iterated over? Well, we could do um, something like this. So we have our min set to 0. And let's set our max to 120. Now, to get those values, let's just say every fifth value, we could just add step. So now, you can see this moves a little bit differently here as we move along. So I'm going to copy and paste off the screen here, this on in, and let's see this actually working in the console. So as we move it, we should see that it only moves by fives. And it does go up to 120. It goes back down to zero. And this is, uh, this is sliders for you. Let me know what you think about them. Like, share, subscribe if you like what I'm doing and support it. I actually really love what I'm doing for you all, even maybe the, the five people that watch this. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day and see you all in the next video.